Hello, and welcome to another uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan draft. Uh, today I'm hopping back in. It's the third day of the format, um, and we're going to start uh, start start drafting. Um, so, where do things stand at the, at the current moment? Uh, I still think, again, sort of like everything is still kind of the same. You know, we're thinking just guy. Um, we've actually, as far as I can tell, I've moved green ahead of black in my color power rankings. Um, my current power rankings would sit as sort of like blue at number one. I think white's number two. Red and red are similar. I would say they're similar um, in terms of their strength. And then green would be at number three or four. And then black is at number five, I think, clearly. I think green actually has some stuff that can get there, whereas black, to me, seems like it mostly misses. I mean, I have not had a lot, not had a lot of success with black cards. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the Millennium Calendar. So this card, I think, is really awful, and I don't even want to bother. Like, I understand, like, oh, content, do the content, like, it's content to take this card that is just unplayable, and, like, the game, the games go too fast, like, it just doesn't do anything. Um, Dreadmaw's Ire has actually underperformed a little bit for me, and I actually think I would rather be in blue than red. So I think I'm going to take one of these blue cards. Specifically, I think I want to take Oaken Siren. Let me quickly check which of these is the highest win rate right now. For commons at this at this stage, um, the data is actually pretty good. Um, and then there's the... They're basically the same. And they've actually fallen down a little bit. Like, Iyer is maybe the best card, even. Um, hold on. Dreadmaw's Ire. It's 58. Yeah, it's a little worse. I do think I would rather be blue than red, so I'm going to take the Oaken Siren. Um, did you see the Join the Dead? I think I'm pretty hard off of black unless I see specifically exactly this card, but I'm going to just take Clayfire Bricks. Clayfire Bricks is, like, really busted. There's a lot of good cards in this pack. Uh, River Herald Scout, the Pirates are good. This card's really busted. This card's great, obviously, although a Braid has been a little, you know, hasn't been amazing or anything. Um, it's been good. It's been good. The, the clay fire bricks are just like is just like one of the best cards i uh, know i don't take cloud guards cracked like it's really busted but i'm gonna just take the clay fire bricks because it's really good now i can just take water wind scout which i think is a lot better than charter course another deep cavern bat they're just ripping around here it is probably black's best it's it and chupacabra are like the reasons to play black but like that's just not enough um for me personally um uh, what is one is this one again water wind hold on Getting a deep look into how I do stuff <laughs> this early in the format. Uh, when it's this early in the format, I kind of just take uh, the the word of seventeen lands as gospel. I am a big I'm an enjoyer of the uh, the platform personally. As the format progresses, um, that's that's becomes less and less the case because I have like ex more experience with the cards and I have better feelings about them. But this, but this early, um, when you have two days worth of sample for commons, um, it really is just better. It's always better than my intuition. Um, okay, so here I think I'm going to take either the Wanderglyph or the Tendril of the Micro Tyrant. I could take Gem Guard. I don't like Gem Guard very much, though. Might of the Ancestors. Might of the Ancestors is actually okay, and I might actually take it. Because I do kind of like it. Like, it is actually done, like, somewhat okay. Um, I did play a deck with it in there. It has a decent... Like, it doesn't have a huge sample, but it's actually been okay. It has a negative IWD. Game played one right. So it's actually not the best. Maybe I should just take the Water Glyph, because the Water Glyph's good. Or I should take Tendril the Micro Tyrant. Because Tendril the Micro Tyrant's... Yeah, you know what? We'll take Tendril the Micro Tyrant. This card I've found to be very good. Um, against me, like it's basically just like once you get to seven mana, you kind of just win the game. So um, I will take it. I read these somewhat medium red cards um, here. So the best card in this pack is probably Goblin Tomb Raider. Um, is it better than? I mean, it's better than Sunscribe, but Sunscribe allows me to play these Clay Fire Bricks potentially, and Clay Fire Bricks is super busted. Um, I do think blue white's a better deck than blue red, not by like an enormous amount, but I think it's kind of close. This is definitely the best card, right? So the question is, should I just take the best card, or should I take the sunscribe? Sunscribe is really medium. 
Um, I think I'm just going to take the two. I think it's early enough in the draft that we're just going to take the best card. And move. Oh, oh my. Oh, oh dear me. I don't think this is, this is a rare, so that there's not going to be... Like this, I mean, okay, it has terrible stats, actually, like, which honestly makes sense. But I, I'm back on my boats, man. I, this card, <laughs> it if you ever untap with it and you can crew it, you basically just win on the spot. I don't know. I do understand why it's it's not super great. I do, I do understand. Um, I should probably just take the, I should probably just take the iceberg. But I would hate myself if I did that. Would I hate myself for winning? For wanting to win? No, actually, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate myself. I would love myself more. I would love myself even more. Uh, this is a pretty clear one for me. Uh, the staunch crewmate's just busted. Um, it's just a really good card. So we're just going to take it over Oak and Siren. I think Oak and Siren is good, but... The, uh, the crewmate, just finding everything is great. Look... The boat, I have had my fun with the boat. Um, I have. It's good. It's fine. Is it good? It had its moments for me where it was very good, but it also had its moments for me when it was garbage. Um, it is very good when you get to attack with it, but it probably did lose me some games. And I do trust. Like when it says fit when the, when it says fifty five percent, and I understand it's early. I'm just like. Eh, ooh. Not so, I, was, I saw that and I was like, oh, it's busted, it's busted. And then I'm like, oh, wait, actually, it's not. It's not that busted. <laughs> um, I'm just doing what's right for me, okay? Um, I'm doing the things that I want. Ooh, this is interesting. Is Blunder or Iceberg better? I think Iceberg is better. Um, uh, I do think that the Iceberg is better. The Blunder does allow me to interact, but Iceberg is an artifact, which just works with Oak and Siren and other stuff, too. And works with the Bricks. Alright, we'll take the Pirates here. Pirates is a really good card. Um, when you have all these artifacts that I, like I do. Um, currently, I'm on Blue-White, and I think Blue-White is probably the best deck. Let me actually check what the, the Numbies have as the best deck currently. Deck, color, data... Um, it does have blue white as the best deck, and I would be inclined to. Wow, this is a tough pick here. Pirates versus Oak and Siren. Uh, I think I want the Oak and Siren. That's actually a tough pick, though. By the ancestors, sure. Let's try it out. Out of air. Worm. This is why you don't. This is why you don't do this. This is why you don't check the deck color when right. Ah, uh, man. Wow, this is tough. So there's the Magmatic Galleon, and this card is, like, uber busted, so I might just take it. There's also Lodestone Needle and Staunch Crewmate, which are both decent blue cards. The Galleon is just, like, super busted, though, so I am just going to take it. I think I think the Galleon is... Like, it has the one of the highest win rates, uh, the total, and I think it's just super busted, so I am just going to take it. And then cry. Um, this pack is truly not very good. So, the Mischievous Pup, despite being okay for me, has its issues. And... I don't really like any of this. Maybe I'll just take the Sunscribe. I I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. All right, now we just take Crewmate again. Really good card. So there's a Chupacabra Echo in here, but I don't. I simply can't be asked. I don't know why this is here. So I have the Crewmates to find all my artifacts. The fact that the Crewmate also finds artifacts is just so huge. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get to play these white cards. The Guidewing is one of the best cards, though. The Magnetic Galleon is also cracked. Um, it is a super busted card. Um, and I have this Goblin Tomb Raider, which is a good card, too. So I can't, uh, can't be complaining. I have the, these things that also work in the late game. Don't have any real, like, 
interaction, interaction. I think this is better enough than the Hidden Cataract, because I just don't think the Hidden Cataract is very good. Cargo Wrestler's okay. Um... Yeah, these, these things are pretty good, though. I like these quite a bit. Um, especially if you have enough artifacts, which I do at the moment. Like, I have six, but I also have one here. And again, I'm probably playing red for the boat, but we'll see. Look, I, I passed one boat, and I was I was offered another second. I was offered a second chance at boating. I said yes. Ooh, this card is pretty good. The problem is that I would need to like splash it, but it is. Uh, it's not really splashable. Hmm. <laughs> so confounding riddle has been worse than I thought it would be because I just had a cube mindset. I'm still probably just going to take it, though. Yeah. I am just going to take it. Ooh, Spike Glass Siren. Wow, that's a late Spike Glass Siren. No respect. Red not super open, huh? I mean, it would be really hard for me not to play this card because it's, you know, ridiculous. Uh, but certainly not the most open I've ever seen red be. Uh, the two minute deal for in white that was in that pack, I've been pretty happy with, but, you know. Basically in blue, the game plan is you just get a bunch of water wind scouts and you can't lose. That's the, that's the strategy. And it's a, uh, it's a good strategy. I think we are putting these in the sideboard right now, unless I open something even more busted than Magmatic Galleon. Um, cause this thing is an absolute truck. Two Iceberg. Icebergs are nice. The Pirate. I think I actually want the Wander Glyph. Mm. So the Pirates are decent. The Wander Glyph has been kind of good for me, though. It's been, like, kind of good. Like, I'm going to just take the Wander Glyph. Like, I've, I've been pretty impressed by this card. I thought it was going to just kind of be, like, a nothing, whatever. But I think it's actually been sort of decent. And I already have two of these, and there is Diminishing Return. Wow. Wow. Third staunch crewmate. This card is just cracked. Like it, like it draws every single card in my deck. I'm gonna have options. Like it, the only card it doesn't hit is like this one, which is funny because it's like the best card. But it literally draws like every single card that I have. During discovery, I haven't played yet, and it's probably probably awful in this deck because my deck is just all two drops. Like this is not really a discover four deck, but I, I could see it being sort of okay. Let me actually see. Eh, it's not been great. Not a surprise. Not a surprise. Um, we have no interaction, that's true. This actually could be a dowsing device deck. As bad as dowsing device is, which is, I don't think it's great. I Do I believe in Cogwork Wrestler enough to take it over a, a hidden cataract? Fine, I'll take it. It has a high win rate right now, but I, I don't actually... Oh, there's a hidden cataract coming around, so actually now I have no regrets. I do think this card's probably good enough. Wow, blue's just wide open. <laughs> I mean, this card's not, like, busted or anything, but it shouldn't be going, like, last pick. I think that's, you know, a little bit... Maybe a little bit a bridge too far, you know? Um, ooh, this card's, like, uber busted, but I don't think I'm going to be able to cast it. Which is okay, you can't cast them all. Um, this card is very good, but splashing is very bad. I may just take it anyways. I mean, this card's also good. There's the Guide Mural, which again, isn't really the most splashable thing on planet Earth. Whew, there is nothing in this pack for me, huh? Monstrosaur. Yeah, I mean, it, the Monstrosaur's not great. But maybe. Uh, now we're gonna take a Tolly's favor, I think. Sunshine Militia is like fine. I think a Tolly's favor is kind of like just way better. I do have a good curve with it too, where I have a bunch of twos and not a whole bunch of ones, so that is good. Unlucky Drop could come back. I'm expecting one of those blue cards to wheel, which would be nice. About in this pack where there's nothing. 
So, like, hear me out. How crazy is it to take Ultec Cloud Guard and splash it? <laughs> is that too? Is that too much? I mean, I guess I can take Hot Foot Gnome, but I mean, Distant Echo is just not. My me trying to figure out where. Oh, it's Diadect Echo. Well, that's, you know, pronunciation moment. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. Hmm. So I'm actually going to take another Atali's favor because I think the card's great. Cogwork Wessler. The first Cogwork Wessler to wield. So I think. Means the second one's guaranteed to wield, obviously. Staunch Crewmate again. And this card's just, like, busted. <laughs> like, it just. Like, I don't know what. I mean, it just goes in any blue deck. It's just really good. So this is the deck currently. I may not want this. The one thing about the Staunch Crewmates is that there is some issues with the like plundering of the Wailing Pirates where I'm like, I do kind of need to like have enough artifacts in my deck. I have 8, 9, 10. I know the Deep King isn't very good, but I will take it here. It's probably better than Monstrosaur. Eh, it has it basically rated about the same, but this deck does have artifact synergies. How's Council of Echoes been doing? I don't think it's been very good. That's a Clayfire Bricks. It's been better than you would think, honestly. Clayfire Bricks is like uber busted. I can't really splash it though. I have two of them. I like can't cast either, so it's just gonna be tough. Ooh, Waterwind Scout, busted card. Um, I don't really want to play this. So this came back, sure. So blue white was open, and like, I don't. I mean, like blue red was like not super super open, but the galleon. Do I think my deck would be better if it was blue white? Probably, yeah. At the end of the day, just because um, I would have had two guide murals and two clay fired bricks. Which is pretty busted. It's like a busted little combination. Wow, this is a tough pick. There's Iceberg versus Shipwreck Sentry. Iceberg is probably just better. There's Sunshine Militia too, but who cares? Not me. The over the, the early season hype is uh, is overblown, in my opinion. Idols of the Deep King is going. But you have no interaction, so true. So true, and yet so false. How can something be so true and also false? Alright, uh, this is, I think, the deck we're just going to roll with here. I feel decent about it. Do I want to cut anything for a... Brackish Blunder? Cogwork Wrestler. I don't know. The Cogwork Wrestler concerns me. Because again, it's like, it's early stuff is good, but I just don't buy that it's like super great. I don't know. We'll, we'll just try it out. Deck seems great. It's att it's attacking time. It's time to attack. That's what we're doing. This deck has no like payoffs for uh, generating artifacts other than that. Like you can just draw a bunch of them with the pirate guy. Um, I have four pirates. I didn't, th I didn't. I have four of those two mana two ones that draw like whatever card you want in my entire deck, which is pretty good. We'll see. I could just get run over. That is a thing that can happen. Okay, we've already drawn two staunch crewmates, so that's good. Um, will I die? Well, I guess we'll have to find out, won't we? Okay, we got staunch crewmate. They didn't have a two drop, so they probably just lose. Um, the cover wrestler gets a lot worse when you have it face up, huh? <laughs> gets a lot worse when you have it face up. So that's a kin caller. Will I gain some life? Probably. Seems likely. Sacred Shaker Dreadmaw. Don't love that. I'm gonna just tell his favor. Let's see what happens. Cast that. Draw an island. 
Yeah, I'm attacking, I think. They're just gonna block? Okay, that's fine. I definitely would prefer them not have dinosaurs in play, because the Earthshaker's Red Maw is gonna absolutely annihilate me. Oh, I, I don't... I don't much care about that. They did find the yes button on the next to the mill, so that's good for them. I think I'm just gonna go waylaying pirates here. Other options include not doing that, but I think I like just doing this. Um, it's not the best waylaying pirates I've ever seen, but like what are like again? I could just go crewmate plus like goblin tomb raider, but that's not great. It's not spending all my mana, and they decided that they wanted to pay three life to kill that, which is like totally fine. Um, and now I can do some other stuff, like play goblin tomb, like play staunch crewmate. I guess let's just go staunch crewmate plus waterwind scout. That's probably the best line here. Staunch crewmate into staunch crewmate seems good. Just go staunch crewmate, staunch crewmate, goblin tomb raider. Or I can just play the water. I think I'm just gonna play the waterwind scout. Um, so they could just play Undertaker Dreadmaw here, but I honestly genuinely don't care. Oh no, a six minus six six trample. That doesn't do anything. <laughs> no, no, the nothing that it was doing. Um, I think I want to just go Pirates, and then I can Brackish Blunder it, or bra it's Brackish is the right word. I guess I should Crewmate first, huh? Draw first. Boat. Flying Pirates, Dreadmaw, Smash All, they might block, I genuinely don't care. Certainly welcome to do that, they did not do it, so I don't know. They might get to like draw cards or something now that they have a Dreadmaw in play. Oh, they've discovered four. Okay, that was actually a good one to hit. <laughs> Opponent has hit the one good card in their deck. Congratulations. Next, I'm probably just going to go Galleon, Braggus Blend of the Dreadmaw, I think. That's what I think I'm going to do. I just go Galleon. And then smash all. Actually, I think I want to use the treasure, too. And if they trade for my 3-3, three, three, that's fine. Yeah. To bounce this. Because it's tapped, so I get a map token. Um, next turn, I can go flip the iceberg and crew the galleon. I don't love that plan so much anymore. Chupacabra Echo in the graveyard. Oh, okay, look at that. They're gonna gain three life. Don't love to see that. Ooh, that's a good draw. That actually is a great draw. Hmm, so what do I wanna do here? I can just crew the boat. I wouldn't hate flipping this iceberg though. Flip the iceberg by sacrificing a artifact because I don't have one in my graveyard. So I can probably just do one like this. Yeah, I can stay on top. Let me flip this by making a thing. Crew it with this one. Attack. Oh, my thing is just being weird. Do this. They do get to draw a card here, which I'm not super thrilled about, but there's only so much you can do in life, you know? Sometimes your opponent's 6 6 gets to draw a card, so it is unfortunate. It's just the way of the world. My 6 6 also drew a card, so it was fine. Um, okay, so what are we going to do here? I th think what I'm going to do is this, and then I'm going to 
screw the boat. I'm gonna explore on the boat. Let's see if I hit a non-land. Did not hit a non-land. So if I attack, they go block. Block, jump. I think I'm smashing all. Um, untap. I guess I can untap this thing. Take action, I will untap it. They can eat my boat if they want, that's fine. They likely will, but that means they're taking a whole bunch of damage and I still have a 6-6, six, six, which is totally cool. Two, they're now dead in the air next turn. As well as me having like a million things in play. And they're they're off it, so that's that's good. That's always nice. Um, and that is that's game one, baby. Hold on, hold on. All right, we're continuing. It's darker now. It's dark outside, but um, I'm returning. So. I'm going to keep this hand. I don't love it, but I am going to keep it. I mean, like if they ever move my two drop, like it's not great. Right? Like it's not great, but the curve is pretty sicko if they don't. Um, so this is interesting. I think I still want to play the Wander Glyph over the Staunch Crewmate. That could be stupid because I probably don't want to. Actually, I guess I discard the Mountain. So it wouldn't be that bad. Sunshot militia, all right, well. That don't matter none. Discover three time and then, ha. Discover three, or just rerun it, run it back real quick. And we're gonna play that. The mill a card, draw a card. We're gonna discard a mountain here. This is a solid turn three, make a four four and then just like smash. <laughs> Make a 4-4, four, four, make a door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a good turn three. It was a solid turn three. Can't can't blame them there. Can't uh, can't blame them there, really. Truly. We've all been there, have we not? Opponent, you just have no removal. Opponent hits a Tully's favor off a Tully's favor, and you just lose. It's, uh, it's brutal. It's just an absolute brutal start. That's why I tell these favors so good, is you can hit, like, if, you know, it's actually good in multiples, but look at this hand. Two staunch crewmates, can't lose, and you can't lose. You can't actually lose, surely. So... Puzzle door time. I'm gonna just play the crewmate. I think it's better than iceberging because it gives me okay. I can just miss. That's also allowed. Wow, that's a that's a rare miss in this deck. That is hard to do. That is very difficult to do. Impressive. Ooh. Can we do the same? Can we go back to back? Atali's favor into Atali's favor. I'm just gonna put that in my hand. I think. Not as good of an Atali's favor as the last one, I'm not going to deny it. Though, not a bad, not not horrible, you know, like three mana, give your thing, plus one, plus one, and trample, draw a card. It's not an absolute nightmare, right? Um, I don't think it's good to bounce through a Herald Scout. I could have bounced my own guy, but I don't think that's, like, good at all. Okay, did they put in the graveyard? Island, sure. This guy. Okay, what does this do? Whenever it explores a land card, do stuff. Otherwise, do other stuff, right? Either way, we're smashing. So, anyways, I started blasting. I'm gonna go crewmate first, and surely I won't miss again. Pirates, whaling pirates, and go iceberg. That, draw a card. All right.
right. Water wind scout. Next turn, I'm probably just gonna pirates. Oh, that card. Explore a creature. So this gets a plus one plus one counter. It's rather unfortunate. I am just gonna like tap this thing down now, or yeah, I can tap it down and then I can. Um, unfortunately, this is gonna get a plus one plus one counter, which is pretty bad for me. I mean, it's actually like not that bad if they attack, but I don't think they're attacking. Maybe I should play the Waterwind Scout then. Hmm. Am I committing too hard to Brackish Blundering their guy? I mean, this thing is pretty annoying. There's no denying it. But the pirates doesn't do anything on attacks, really. I think I'm just gonna play the scout and then blunder. Unless they attack me or something, and then maybe I'll do something different. But I guess the scout doesn't really work that well because they do have a fly, like a, a flyer that I know about. But it's gonna get bounced. I can't really prevent them from exploring, so I'm just gonna let them explore. And, you know, it is what it is, right? Blue green doing the thing, rares up, you know? I mean, it'll just take my, you know. Because then I can waylaying pirates on my turn. They did put that away, which I think is reasonable. They could have it become a 3 4. They didn't. 4 5, yeah. It's not really a reason for them to attack, because they know I have the blunder. I do have. I get a map token, sure. I am going to bounce the Waterwind Scout if they make it explore. They did not. Bouncing this. Then. So I could. Flip the. I think I'm down to just do this, TBH. And attack with. I can explore first, I guess. On what, though? Probably the staunch crewmate. Yeah, that one's good. Then we do this. I think I'm down to trade my 2-1 one for their 1-2 on the ground. The 1-2 on the ground is kind of annoying. Take four here. To kill the other thing for free, which is nice. They go to ten. Um, they do have a four five in play, and they're going to get to explore again. But. I mean, I guess they have two explorers, so there is that. I don't feel like I'm in like the best of spots, TBH. Now they hit the non-land too, which is unfortunate. Kind of needed that to be a land, because now my attacks aren't good. I guess the question is, do I make this iceberg into a, a real boy here? <sighs> so if I attack all, they block the 4-3, take 3, 4, 5. I am definitely just attacking all, for sure. Is there any point in attacking with the Cogwork Wrestler? 
Not especially. I guess I could explore on the staunch crewmate. Depends on if they want to explore again here. Make their thing larger. To my face. And they're probably playing an artifact. Puzzle door. Hmm. So this is interesting. So I could flip the iceberg, make a 6-6, six, six, or I could play this, and if I hit on the crewmate, so they're gonna just, blow. I think, I think I wanna have another flyer in play. So I think I'm gonna just do this. The question is where does the map token go? I think it's gonna go on the crewmate, cause if I, if I miss it doesn't matter, but if I hit it does matter. Um, Yeah, that's pretty solid actually. And then now I go like this. They're getting now have to take either take five additional damage, which they kind of can't do as a result of how much flying is happening here. If they do take the five damage, then they're at three. They kind of just have to block every time, which is a bit of a nightmare. You really don't want to be blocking here, but they, they have to. There's just no choice. So, puzzle door. You cannot explore at instant speed. It's not legal. So, they could have that in their hand, or maybe not. We'll see. They can make the Oaken Siren explore, which isn't great for me, but I always have the Waterwind Scout. Uh, so they, they took something that's better than that. Um, always, you know, reasonable. The nice thing about the Spyglass Siren is that I can play it and flip the Iceberg next turn, assuming they miss, or I guess it's not really a miss, uh, you can't really miss on Explorer. Okay, that's a problem. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a problem, huh? Well... Here's what we're going to do. Flip the iceberg. And play as Spyglass, Spyglass Siren. Because I don't have much of a choice. Perfectly honest with you, that is sort of the only move that I have. Because they drew a flying blocker. But, um, now I do have a bunch of big stuff that can, you know, threaten to attack and whatnot. They do obviously have something to do, otherwise they would have explored, I think, because they just get like a bunch of free stuff when they explore. So, we are, we're going to see, in by Piranhas, they have made it into a 1-1. One, one. Understandable. They are still at 8, though, which is nice, because it means that they kind of like, are going to have a really, really difficult time attacking me ever. The uh, explore value has been very high from them. Let's see, so they did actually hit the, the beast notable here. Their deck is just all explore. It's just all theirs all in. Uh, have all the payoffs. That's what a good blue green deck looks like, I think. Now, there's no interaction at all, but when you have a bunch of flyers, you don't really need it. So, I would like to triple block. How does that go wrong? Plus three, plus three. Well, I just lose straight up to that. Um, I think I'm just going to say no blocks, right? So this is a little bit of a dangerous attack from them. I, the Oaken Siren, I kind of want to triple block. There is the plus three plus three combat trick that does just absolutely annihilate me. God, it's so bad if they have it. If I'm blocking, I'm triple blocking the Oaken Siren. 
I just can't really imagine them making the attack if they don't have it, right? I guess that does. No, it's such a huge blowout. I, I don't. No, they don't have it. They didn't have any react. They didn't have anything. They bluffed me. They got me. In fact, you might even say they boomed me. Okay, I'll do this. What's the box? Interesting. Uh, they're like. I'm gonna take the iceberg. I think we wanna have it like this. Look for a draw card. Skillful. Uh, how bad is an attack all? They like eat all my stuff, yeah, no attacks. But they do have another like explore thing on top. Like they're actually, so if I had blocked, I would be in a great spot, by the way. I'd have been in an absolutely excellent spot because they never had, I figured that nobody ever had the trick, but who will they? Will they see the line of not putting a land onto the battlefield? Nope, they didn't find it. Opponent was unable to find the line of not putting your lands on the battlefield every single time you have the opportunity to. Um, obviously they can't really attack. So if I tap down their something and then hit them for a bunch, they have one, two, five blockers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight attackers. Uh, sure. If so, how sure? I think what I'm going to do is block the Iceberg Titan for sure. Just chump the 6-7. Oh, I guess if they have like the Trample Trick on that, I'm kind of just dying, huh? So it's probably better to block like this. Uh, is this, I mean, am I just, I think I'm just dead if they have the trick, but they didn't have it last turn. Four, eight. I can't really block in a way that doesn't, that it doesn't lose to it, so. Uh, do I want to chump? Does chumping matter? I'm trying to think about what they can have. Is there a deal four in the set? Is there any way to deal four damage exactly? I don't think there's any way to deal four damage exactly in blue green. Ah, well, we'll find out. So I have two, four, so they block three, they take two, four, six, seven, eight, hold on, they block three, two, two, four, six, eight, yeah, okay. They're dead. They are just dead here. We've done it. Opponent was very aggressive despite not having anything there, which actually I think is like kind of fine. I don't know. They could have been a little more conservative with their attacks. Did not want to leave themselves like dead on the crackback. Wait, they were just dead. They just knew they were dead there. Interesting. Attacking with the 6 7 especially seemed kind of awful, but we'll see. I mean, we won't see. We just saw whether or not it was good. It wasn't good. <laughs> Oh boy, the early season joys of not being in Mythic yet, so you don't have to, and also people just not knowing the cards that well, you know. So not the best hand I've had, had so far, but certainly not a mulligan. So I'm going to go turn to Oak and Siren, because then I can play both on three. Treasure map. 
Hmm, does this change my plans at all? I still think the answer is no, because more mana, more better. Still want to play the Oaken Siren. If they kill the Oaken Siren, is it even that bad? I mean, it's bad, obviously. It's not good. You'd prefer them not to do that, but... That untaps. Uh, so I'm just going to play... Cremate first, I guess. See what happens. See if I want to do something or not. Cremate into Cremate, sure. Um, you get in, you play the Iceberg. That's unfortunate, I kind of want that card, but you can't have it all. You really just can't have it all. So this is, this is probably going to get used to explore. It's a little awkward because it's going to be like a post-combat explore. Doesn't really where you want to be. Plane cycling for two. Treasure map is going to absolutely brutal, brutalize me here, potentially. Okay, I'm eventually just going to lose to that, if, assuming I don't get enough flying attackers in play. This thing also makes a flyer, which is pretty annoying. We do have, like, the big icebergs, though, so there's that. Way to get around it. Um, two on the top. Okay, don't love that. Really do not love that. Um, okay, so I have five mana this turn. I can go Waterwind Scout plus Wanderglyph, which I think is what I'm going to do. Um, and then next turn I can activate the Iceberg. It's unclear whether that's actually good or not. Map token, make a 2-2. Two, two. Am I blocking? Yeah, I'm probably blocking. Because worst case scenario, they're giving me fodder for the iceberg, and they're like using their mana suboptimally. Sunshot militia. Who cares? Did they keep that on top? Could even like triple block. Is that good? What is it good against? It's good against removal. They have not decided not to attack me. A bold choice. Um, I think instead of flipping the Iceberg, because that kind of just goes all in, I want to play Cataract, so I think we're going to Crewmate first, see what's in the box. Then, okay. Probably want to explore, I think. Do I explore on now? Hmm, let's explore on the Waterwind Scout, I guess. And in the hand. And I'm gonna go to combat. Attack with you two. They might be able to kill the Oaken Siren, that's like fine. They've decided instead to kill my two two. Sure. Um, I think I am gonna explore this turn. Hell am I? I don't have an artifact in the graveyard for Iceberg. It is like a free scry essentially. Um so it's kinda tough. I think I am going to actually explore on this Plyglass Siren. Yeah, that one's good. Good enough for me. Good enough for me. It is a little concerning that they know about that, but... Torch. Rude, but they, that means they have to attack, though, which isn't actually all that bad for me, because I just get to eat their guy in exchange for them killing my flyer. And it can start Sunshot Militiaing me, but I'm at 17. It's not like it's good or anything. Treasure map, flip it. Sure. Okay, now I get to start drawing cards. And again, they, their, their engine for, like, killing me is kind of online. It is, it is online. They're definitely doing damage to me. Prodigious rate. 
There's no denying it. They did not. Want to use the free one? Okay, always allowed. I think I'm a Tali's favorite. I could just make a 6-6. Six, six. Problem with making a 6-6 six, six is that it has other issues. I think Spike Blast Siren's getting the Atali's favor. Yep, casting that. Uh, probably cast another one, does that sound good? Yeah, another one seems good. Good Siren. Oaken Siren. And here we are. So I am taking, what, like six a turn or something? Five a turn? I think my clock is faster, though. I take one, two, three, four a turn. So that's four turns, four turn clock. It's really a three turn clock with the Sunfire Torch, but. I can also make the landmark thing. Also draw some cards with Treasure Cove, but I also have my my clock is a little faster because I do have the the Wander Glyph as well to uh, start like to, to get rid of. The problem is I lose like all these two ones. Like the two ones are just gonna run into the one three and die, which isn't great. But I do have a couple of turns here, or I, like I can also just find removal for Sunshot Militia, which isn't bad. Uh, it's not so bad. I'm not, it's not 100% clear where the Atali's favor was supposed to go, by the way. It could have been supposed to go on the Wander Glyph, because then I... Yeah, actually, because then I don't really mind how they block, because then they trade... Well, it's a slower clock, though, I guess, is part of the rules. Still not enormously thrilled about this Iceberg. I guess I should start just attacking with the Wander Glyph, because then it gets in the graveyard, so I can Iceberg it back. Uh, thankfully they did not hit their bomb rare off of that. That would have been terrible. <laughs> Whew, that was, uh... It's not 100% clear that they know that the landmark transforms into something with flying, but I also don't really care very much. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. I can blow up their Sunshot Militia, and then they just have no plan anymore, no future. I can also attack when I do that. Because then they only get to kill 1 2 1, which is like awful for them. Discard land. Draw a thing that would have been nice to be able to cast. They get to eat my 2 2, and they're just going to trade down. Sure. And that's it. That's my turn. Do you have any responses? I don't think it was better to kill, like, because, I mean, I don't think it really matters what I killed there. I mean, it does matter. Cause, you know, they, they just can't ping me out. They could draw another one, but then they have to spend two mana, and they don't have nearly as many permanents in play. Okay, that doesn't do anything. I mean, they're dead on board right now. So... I'm still, I'm still not 100% convinced they know that the landmark trans transforms into something with flying. It doesn't really do anything, because it's a 1-4, but if it did something, then it might be doing something, I guess would be sort of my view of the, uh, the situation. Right, we're, almost at, we're almost at diamond. Almost. Oak and Siren, adding mana and also having flying. That's it. That's that's the that's what the card does. I know, believe it or not. It's hard to believe it is. It's difficult. I like seeing hand like what's what's great about having decks where like you just have so many two drops is whenever I see a hand with like two lands of different colors in it, I'm just like, I'm all in oh, okay, Galleon, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the uh, the busted rare. It's not as busted when they know you have it. Um, I'm gonna pitch the blunder here. 
it's not very good in this spot, and I don't think I need it, so I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm on the tempo beats uh, play pattern here. Oh yeah! Staunch crewmate. Staunch crewmate. <laughs> uh, I have seen all four copies of my staunch crewmates uh, so far this game. Right, dead weight, you got me. So the part, I'm just gonna go staunch crewmate, and then probably play iceberg. They do have a promising vein over there. Yeah. Um. I'm just gonna attack. See what happens. They're just gonna trade, but that's fine. Removes their ability to descend. Removes the sacrifice piece from their board. It's still like a you know it's not it's still like they're two for oneing me right, but I'll two for one to them with like back, so it's not it's not as bad. Okay, not so bad. I don't have. I do need a mountain, but. Double Wailing Pirates with an Artifact in play now is good. Even if I draw an island, it's not so bad. Are we on the, uh... I want, do I once again find myself on the... I want to see if I draw land off this first. Because if I do... I didn't, but I did draw something that allows me to... jam here, which is what I'm going to do. They do have the Wrath, but... They could have the Wrath, obviously, is what I'm saying. They don't, they, I don't know for sure if they have the Wrath, but if they do, which it certainly is possible, um, then that would be somewhat unfortunate. I think I'm down to just, all right, deck, I do need to at some point. Do at some point need to find another land. Third iceberg. We th we doing three icebergs. I could just pirates. They're one one. That's pretty good. I'm just gonna do that. Pirates the one one attack with my two power creatures into their three two. It's like kind of the worst thing ever for them to block, and they are gonna do it too. Wow. That really shows the state of things. If they're blocking there. Could be possible they have the Wrath. Nope, don't have the Wrath. They definitely, at this point we're on, they do not have the Wrath in any scenario. It just doesn't make any sense for them to do what they're doing if they have it, so. No longer playing around it. Um, Dusk Rose Reliquary does not trigger Descend. Any mountains? That's a mountain. <laughs> that is a mountain. Not even 100% sure that this is like the strictly correct play, but it, it did make a boat and put the boat in play, so that was that was good. Generally putting boats in play. Oh, okay, wait, this isn't good for you. <laughs> this isn't. Did you think this was accomplishing something? Because it uh, didn't. I grab an iceberg here, iceberg lettuce in many ways. Uh... I guess I'll just play the pirates and smash for five. Smash for five seems good. Put them to three. Dead in a lot of ways here. They're dead to just me flipping an inverted iceberg. Dude, this galleon is just so good. You know what's really good? The two one pirate that I have four of. <laughs> Card's so busted. It's just super busted. We made it to diamond. the The rank up stream continues. We're just we're five. We're just cruising. We are just we are just rolling along. We are rolling, baby, rolling. So, the takeaways so far from this deck: two drops are good. This is you know these are the, the key takeaways. Large red boats that have a 67% game in hand win rate are good. Yeah, no, that's, we figured that out. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's what I've determined. <laughs> that's what I've, that's what I've learned so far today. Um, it's been a learning process. Format's been, uh, you know, 
it's still too early to tell whether or not this is a format that's great or anything. I thought Wild of Eldraine was great, and then I kind of got sick of it. I'm not going to deny it. It was my most successful format ever. Uh, just from like a pure math standpoint, like I cashed in the open, so like like I haven't you know done that in any other format. So that was uh, you know obviously just from a value standpoint, on a personal level, it was like great. So this is a very classic disguise by don't play not playing an island on one. I drew a boat. That's positive. I did actually miss with the crewmate in this deck, which was kind of impressive when I did it. I think I just want the iceberg here. Um, somewhat unclear though. Okay, I'm just gonna play the other crewmate. Which of these do I want? So Spyglass Siren. Hmm. What do I want to do next turn? Well, next turn I want to play Iceberg, or I want the. I'll take the Pirates. I want to go Iceberg next turn. Spyglass Siren's good, but we're just gonna block. Obviously, it's highly possible that they have something for me here, but I also just do not care. Okay, they do not. Um, Vanguard, sure. Good draw. Uh, we'll go Iceberg first. And then I milled another Iceberg. But the third Iceberg is the, uh, the trick. That's the, that's the one that they never see coming, is the third Iceberg. The question is, do I attack here? Probably, yeah. Um, it's unlikely that they're, I mean, they're just going to attack me back, but, you know, and I wouldn't be able to do that otherwise, but, like, it's not, uh, ooh, that's kind of bad. Uh, order, combat ordering. So I can either kill the, I think I'm just killing the Vanguard, right? Or do I kill the Geological Appraiser? I think we just kill the Vanguard. They're basically the same. The good news is, even if they kill my 2-1, okay, that's messed up. That's a messed up card. You're not allowed to do that. Will attack me. All right. Sure, that was always allowed. That was definitely always allowed. Because now I can just do this. I think I'm just gonna pass instead of playing Atali's favor. I don't know. That might be stupid. How much is this treasure worth, really, to me? It's kind of a good question. Okay, you made a 4 4 flyer. Happy for you. Yeah. Ooh. I'm just gonna play Staunch Cremate. Siren, sure. Do this. I want to see what it hits. Sure, another one. Another Tali's favor. Yeah. Do this. Attack for ten. Take ten. Play the Oaken Siren. Still have Cogwork Wrestler up, even, which is pretty good. Nice. <laughs> so, I would just personally, like, advise my opponents to not
play into like face up pirates that tap down your guy, but I you know I I guess I can't force them to. <laughs> I can't. I don't know why they I genuinely have no idea why they attacked. Like I just don't I really just have no idea. Just couldn't tell you. I mean the the reason they attack like I can tell you the reason I guess. Like the reason is oh my creature's large, I should attack into this two one, but like no. If they didn't attack there it was going to be more difficult. The game was going to be a lot more difficult. Because I would have had to Atali's favor my boat when I attacked. Uh, the the Quintorius the Quintorius was still going to live and make a bunch of 3-2s still, probably. And ooh, this is interesting. I think I just played the crewmate on two. When in doubt, high win rate cards are for high win rate players, right? So... Oh, I shouldn't have played this misplay. Now they know I don't have the cog. Now they know I don't have cog work. And now I know that they might have cog work, because they actually are holding it up. So they definitely do have it. Um, take another staunch crewmate. So I will not be attacking into the cog work unless they play something, and then I'll attack. So it's kind of interesting. I also have to remember that the. They always have the, uh, I should definitely not have done it this order, I should have played the island. I missed, that's fine. I can live with it. Sunfire Torch? Yeah, that's fine. Not a problem. Especially if they sacrifice it. If they don't sacrifice it, it's like, still not a problem, but... Kind of interested in bouncing the Oaken Siren, but not that interested, to be perfectly honest with you. Wow, I missed again. That's actually kind of impressive. Because I have a bunch of pirates and artifacts in my deck. I'm just going to play the one root with and pass. I know you have it. I know you have it. Oh, they're just gonna blow it up. Sure. I have missed on two consecutive staunch crewmates, which is pretty difficult to do in this deck. Alright. Um at this point they're trade they're getting to kill one of my crewmates for For one mana, and that's honestly kind of fine. Oh, they have two of them. Okay, well that this chain, this you know, is a lot worse now. <laughs> two, two cogwork wrestlers is. That's you know. If they have a third one, honestly, like good beats. Like, what are you gonna do? The question is, like, do I want to bounce this Oaken Siren? And I guess the answer is, like, yeah, I kind of do. It's not the best. I'm not going to, like, beat around the bush and tell you it's the best thing ever. I don't feel great about it. I don't feel great about this game because I missed on three, two staunch crewmates, which is impressive. It is an impressive thing to do. They do have a bunch of one-twos, though, so I'm not out of it. I'm just not in it, either. Because, uh... Yeah. So... I mean, I guess if they have a counterspell, you know... It's not great. Do you think they have another... Ah... <sighs> okay. Not so bad. I mean, they're at 13, and I'm at 15. So, it's not 
It's not a complete nightmare. I can craft my thing. They must have something like actually good in their hand. They don't. I know they don't have a third Cogwork Wrestler. They must have something. Assume there's something going on over there. All right. Don't mill anything busted. I did not. Uh, I'm just gonna attack with the pirates. I think. Because technically the other block is free. I mean, they could just have the bounce thing. What is this? So they have the. Oh, that's fine. Sure. I mean, if you like wanted to get two for one, I'd be like that was fine. That was always accepted. Um, do I want to play this land? Do we get any equity from holding it? No. Then we shall play it. Technically they could think that I have something, but it is probably more likely that I need the mana. I'm just gonna block. If they kill my Oaken Siren, sure, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's fine. Big boats. Rather strong. I think if they had a counter spell, they would have used it by now. But perhaps not, and they're just, they've just absolutely gotten me here. I killed their Oaken Siren, and I'm gonna make a treasure token. And I'm gonna attack with my thing. I'm the one with the Oaken Siren now, attacking. I genuinely no idea what's in their hand. Just couldn't tell you. Braid. That actually makes sense. But is also totally fine. Braid makes sense. Uh, I guess I would rather kill this than this. I don't know what this is. Uh chart of course okay that actually does make sense i'm not oh they have double chart of course i see now now it begins to now it's all becoming clear so they did um i'm gonna attack with my three two i think into their two three is that good it seems terrible well, but i guess it attacks as a four four but only if they have an artifact It does uh, prevent my 6-6 six, six from getting in. It also prevents my Goblin Tomb Raider, so I guess I'm just going to hold the Goblin Tomb Raider. So I'd rather, like, the haste actually matter, you know? It's not the Wonder Glyph. I don't have any ways to recur the boat, but they don't know that. I do think I'm going to have enough mana that the Goblin Tomb Raider having haste actually does have some value. They probably would have two lands, two spells on average here. Okay, they probably would have three spells. <laughs> okay, there we go. One Tomb Raider, sure. My Goblin Tomb Raider gets in. And we're just going to attack here. I ain't, uh, I ain't a, you know. Oh, that's fine, by all means. Wait, I get to draw another card? <laughs> I probably should have tapped down their 2-1, actually. That's probably what I should have done, because I always forget that this, like, can actually tap their opponent's, the opponent's stuff, but yeah, you can do that. Yeah, this is fine. Let's do this. Do I need this treasure? I do not think I need the treasure. So we're gonna craft. Exile the 
iceberg here because I'd like to have my other iceberg be larger. I think having the hidden cataract to discover next turn is pretty dang good. Opponent's going to explore, which is good for them. They probably should have done it last turn because it is a surveil. We'll see what they got. <laughs> got to show me what they got. Uh, okay, hit a land. They probably have a decent number of lands in hand then. My iceberg titan. I'm prepared. I'm prepared to send it off. Yeah, top's fine. Guess I can just do this. Okay, tap the tap the tap the tap the mountain, please. Uh. Still think I'd rather have a 6-6 than a random card in my deck. For like the 8th consecutive turn, we are crafting the Iceberg. It's still here. It's still here! It arrived! Okay, Oaken Siren, sure. Think. Oh, do I want to explore pre-combat here? So then I can determine what the cataract finds, which is pretty good. I think I like that. Let's do that. It may just find a land. Yeah, I want that on top, I think. Guess I would rather tap down the Broken Siren. Hmm. Yeah, I'll tap this down. I don't think my 6 6 being untapped matters. They're just going to kill it, most likely, anyway. Yep. <laughs> I'll tap that, yes. So, unfortunately, I am milling this uh, staunch crewmate, but. I'm just going to do this. Discover four here. Uh, well, it's not doing much when they know about it. <laughs> it's not doing much when they know about it. You know? Do I have any artifacts? No. I guess I can, I mean... For the eighth consecutive time, the inverted iceberg is getting flipped over. The eighth consecutive turn. Turn eight. Give it up for turn eight. All right, let's do this. So I only have twelve cards left in my deck. Yeah, we'll cast that. Just keep going here. <laughs> and then we're gonna just upgrade the the. Uh, Upgrade the Cogwork Wrestler. <laughs> it's just it's been the same iceberg is transformed. Four. I think this is this is gonna de this is gonna be a record, right, for the format is just transform the iceberg four times the same iceberg four times in a game. Okay. So they can make their pirate bigger. Also make their so this doesn't actually matter, I don't think. It hit a land as well. It doesn't. So they just take three and die here. That's a nice clean 7-0. Seven, oh, seven to nothing. Doesn't get doesn't get any easier. I mean, what what else is there to say? The uh, the pack two pivot for the uh, the galleon was just thumbs up, and uh, I mean, it's so so let's let's talk about this deck and why it was so good. Uh, four stones crewmates is great, even though that last game two of them missed somehow. Um, Atali's favor, excellent, just excellent. I think it might be better than a braid. I think I think I'm I think I'm coming to the conclusion that this card might actually be better than a braid. It's super busted. This card is just really nuts. Galleon, of course, was just excellent. Won every game that I drew it. Well, of course, I won every game that I drew it. 
Uh, these these pirates, I think, are like a sleeper card, and I really do like them, and they're good in like these blue tempo decks. Icebergs were just excellent. They're just really, really good. Oaken Sirens were also great. Uh, not playing the second Blunder, I feel pretty good about. Uh, the decision to play like second Cogwork Wrestler over second Blunder, I think, is a decision that I agree with. So, yeah. Solid deck. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. See ya.